fine, everything's up and running. Here's your close up look of the cooler. Hey everyone, today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the ID Cooling. This is their Frozen A410DK CPU cooler. ID Cooling is sponsoring today's video, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. They walk you through some key tech specs on the back side of the box. If you're wondering about socket support, all the latest and greatest are supported from both Intel and AMD, you got AM4, AM5, as well as LGA 1200, 1700, etc. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and see what's inside. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our installation guide walking us through all the included parts and pieces, as well as Intel and AMD installation instructions right there for you front and center. We also have our fan mounting and connection options there, and a troubleshooting support page at the very end. Next, you'll see those included parts and components right here. Brackets, fan clips, thermal paste. You can see the thermal paste that's provided. We have a fan power adapter and splitter right there. One to two. We have multiple brackets. We have our Intel and AMD mounting hardware right here and standoffs. Two identical 120 millimeter fans. Take a look at those up close. And on the back, it even specs it up to 2000 RPMs. Four pin PWM connector right there. And then lastly, we have the cooler itself with the frozen logo and branding. See it all different sides and angles. Nice black finish. Four heat pipe design at the bottom. We do need to peel this before use. So take a look at the bottom of the cooler right there. Now let's go ahead, let's get this set up and installed. First things first, we're gonna be installing this on our test bench, which features the Intel 13900K CPU. So I've prepped all of the LGA 1700 parts right here from our backplate, our Intel backplate, to our Intel brackets. Then we have rubber standoffs, our LGA 1700 specific plastic standoffs. And then we have our tightening nuts right there. So let's get this installed. Step one, bracket installed. Step two, install the rubber standoffs. Step three is to install the plastic standoffs and these will be specific Intel LGA 1700 versus 1200 as well as the red ones that are labeled for AMD. Now we'll install those in place. Step four, install our Intel brackets. Step five, now we're gonna install the nuts. Now step six, we're gonna apply some thermal paste. Step seven, we're gonna add the cooler. Make sure to peel off the plastic protective cover on the bottom and gently line everything up. Now we're gonna fasten in place. And last but not least, now it's time to install our fans. Take the clip, hook it through on both sides and repeat on the other side. Now we're ready to clip the fan on. Now repeat that again for the second fan. For this fan, we're gonna follow the direction of airflow so we have the clips installed the other way. Now both fans are installed and it's time to connect them to the motherboard. Using the included adapter, we're gonna plug this end into the CPU fan header on our motherboard. And we'll connect both fans to our adapter. Now it's time to peel off the plastic. Let's fire it up and try it out. All right, everything's up and running. Here's your close up look of the cooler. See the fan in action. We'll look at it from the other side. See the other fan in action right there. Take a look at the detail on the cooler. Get a feel of its size next to a 3080FE. Here's a look at the other side. Really quiet so far. Everything's just idling along. And then here's a look at the last side. Now let's talk about its performance. When looking at the performance of CPU coolers, I like to start off with looking at the cost so we have a better understanding of what we're paying and the value we're getting or value we're not getting. So first up, when it comes to cost, this is gonna be one of the most affordable CPU coolers out there, specifically that comes with two 
fan. So very, very aggressively priced for what this cooler is and what you're actually getting. So compared to the competition, you'll see pretty substantial difference in cost. Now we'll look at some of the data and keep in mind all these tests were done on our test bench, which features the Intel 13900K CPU. So that's quite the task for a cooler this size, but we wanted to stress it out nonetheless. So first up at idle in degrees Celsius, everything will be in degrees Celsius. This comes in at 29. That's right at the average for your typical cooler with that CPU. Next at 65 watts of power, this peaks at 43 degrees Celsius for our average compared to 38 degrees Celsius. Next at 95 watts, we peak at 50 compared to the average of 43. So we're continuing to separate from the average, not in the direction that you want, but I would say it's as expected for this particular cooler. Next, 120, that pattern continues on 57 versus the average of 49. At 170, that separation continues 68 degrees Celsius versus the average of 59, so a nine degree difference. Next, as you would expect, we peaked at 100 degrees Celsius. That's gonna be Intel's max to prevent your CPU from being damaged or anything along those lines. So we did hit that upper echelon and peaked at our 100 degree threshold where the competition either does, most of the time they do hit that 100, or a couple AIOs and a couple really beefy air coolers, maybe, 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 can be a little bit less. I think our lowest was around 80 degrees Celsius with most finishing in the high 90s or peaking at 100. To bring more clarity to what we just looked at, what sort of performance are we getting when we've hit that threshold? Well, this cooler peaked at 322 watts, which is just a little bit below the average, but better than expected. In regards to speeds, this is measured in gigahertz, 5.1 gigahertz for our 13900K with everything maxed out with this cooler on it, which is just slightly below the average of 5.2, but I'd give them an even tie right here. Now, how loud is this cooler, especially since we have two fans on it? Well, with both fans running, everything at idle, we come in at 36 decibels. That's two decibels less than the average. But uh, let me tell you, when you're listening to the average side by side versus this, they're both gonna be very, very faint and hard to hear at idle. So the two decibels don't really make a difference in real life with your ears, you know, listening to this one versus a 38 uh, decibel cooler. And then at max noise, we peak at 70 decibels compared to the competition of 62 decibels, but with two fans and what we were trying to ask this cooler to do, really, I would say well within range of what you'd expect. Honestly, it's only gonna be as loud as the fans are when you have an air cooler like this. And in this case, these fans are pretty loud, especially when they're revved up to 2000 RPMs. So where does that leave us in regards to the ID cooling frozen A410 DK CPU cooler? Well, let me share with you my final thoughts. Here's what you need to know. I think this is geared for budget builders, anybody that wants to have CPU cooling that's better than the stock cooler that they get, or maybe you didn't even get a cooler at all and you need something that's not gonna break the bank. That's where this cooler is really going to excel. I think it looks great too. They did a really nice job with the design and the build quality. They give you everything you need right out of the box to get you up and running, whether it's Intel or AMD, simple and straightforward. If it's your first time building, the instructions could be clearer, but you will be able to figure it out with the helpful diagram. But overall, count me impressed. Sure, I could critique it. I want RGB, I want more heat pipes, I want quieter fans, but at the same time, for what this cooler is, I could say that about any cooler, regardless of price point or anything. So anyways, with this particular cooler and what we put it through, count me impressed.